Now, Abby, you no. want to be the manager of the baseball team? Yes. You know the guy's names? Well, I should. Well, you tell me the guy's names on the baseball I team. I say, who's on first? What's on second? I don't know who's on third. You ain't saying nothing to me yet. Go ahead and tell me. <laughs> Who's on first? What's on second? I don't know. Is on third. You know the guy's I'll... name's on the baseball team. Yes. Well, go ahead. Who's on first? Yes. I mean the guy's name. Who? The guy playing first. Who? The guy playing first base. Who? The guy on first base. <laughs> Who is on first? What are you asking me for? I don't know. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to AM Joy. We've got a real who's on first scenario coming from the White House this week. It all started on Wednesday night when the Washington Post reported, based on anonymous sources, that special counsel Robert Mueller is seeking interviews with three senior intelligence officials. National Intelligence Director Dan Coats, NSA Director Michael Rogers, and Rogers' former Deputy Director Richard Leggett, suggesting that Mueller is now investigating whether Donald Trump obstructed justice. Trump's lawyers responded to the report by blasting the FBI leaks, but rather than let his lawyer speak for him, Trump tweeted, I'm being investigated for firing the FBI director by the man who told me to fire the FBI director, exclamation point, witch hunt. So even though he seems to mix up Mueller, the one doing the investigation, with Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general who hired Mueller and who, at Trump's behest, wrote the memo used as a pretext to fire Comey, Trump basically confirmed that he is under investigation, right? No? An anonymous source close to Trump's legal team is saying that when Trump said, I'm being investigated, he wasn't actually confirming that he was being investigated. And was Trump definitely tweeting about Rosenstein, or perhaps maybe the assistant, maybe the attorney general, or maybe himself? I don't know. Who's on first? What we do know is everyone has lawyered up. Mike Pence, Jared Kushner, even Trump's personal attorney, Michael Cohen, has hired his own lawyer to represent him in the investigation. And joining me now to help unpack the who, what, and the legal why are criminal defense attorney Seema Iyer, former Watergate prosecutor Nick Ackerman, MSNBC legal analyst Paul Butler, and the former representative from South Carolina, Bob Inglis. Thank you all for being here. Um, Nick, I'm going to come to you on this first. Um, what sure. does it say to you um, that even the vice president has now lawyered up and that the president has now added to his legal team, in addition to Mark Kathowitz, Kasowitz, um, a criminal defense attorney. Well, I think what it says is that there is a serious criminal investigation going on, uh, and it obviously was in their interest to have counsel. There's no way that any of these people could go into an interview at the special counsel's office right. and do it without the assistance of counsel or advice of counsel. I mean, it'd be absolutely lunacy mm -hmm. uh, not to have lawyers. And I feel like, Seema, um, the sort of crux of this case um, is the question of why Donald Trump fired Jim Comey. And I feel like That's there right. is sort of the definitive kind of soundbite in that regard. Is Donald Trump himself telling our own Lester Holt why he fired, or at least the circumstances surrounding his firing of Jim Comey? Let's play Donald Trump talking to our own Lester Holt. This is back on May 11th. He made a recommendation. He's highly respected. Very good guy. Very smart guy. Uh, the Democrats like him. The Republicans like him. Uh, he made a recommendation, but regardless of recommendation, I was going to fire Comey. Now, he's talking there about Rosenstein. Right. So he's es essentially saying that he recommended that he do it. Did you get from that soundbite the, the answer to the question of whether or not the firing felt like obstruction? Oh, I don't think it's obstruction at all. I think it may be one piece in the puzzle that could lead up and add up to obstruction, but I still stay with the fact that he is allowed to fire who he wants to fire. I don't think it rises to the level of corrupt intent. Not at this point. I think there's a lot of other factors to look at. What if he also fired Mueller? The, uh, there were three headlines this week uh, about Donald Trump allegedly considering maybe even actually firing Mueller or ordering Rosenstein to fire Mueller. Again, it's just one piece of the puzzle. There's still more things to look at because there is no independent evidence at this point that he has the corrupt intent to actually obstruct justice. Paul, B Paul Butler, I know you disagree with that. <laughs> uh, Joy, if Donald Trump were one of the roundaway boys who SEMA used to prosecute in the Bronx, he would be on his way to jail for obstruction of justice based on his pattern of conduct. Let's look at how he treats every investigator on this case, whether it's Robert Mueller, whether it's uh, James Comey, and now Rod Rosenstein. He wants to fire them. He's trying to get rid of them. This is a man who does not want to be investigated. That's apart from 
all these private conversations asking the vice president and Reese Priebus to leave the room so we can talk to the investigators one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe this is how he used to do things back in Queens when he was building his real estate empire, but this is not how public integrity works in the District of Columbia. And Bob Ingles, I want to go to you on this because you uh, were a member of Congress, a Republican uh, member from South Carolina. You actually helped draft the impeachment articles against Bill Clinton, one of which was obstruction of justice. Um, and you were a at the executive director of something called Republican RepublicN.org. Um, so I want to ask you: apart from the legal question of whether or not this rises to the level of criminal obstruction of justice, when you compare this to what you guys did with Bill Clinton, do you think that this meets the political test of obstruction? Well, this is much more serious than what we were dealing with with Bill Clinton. You know, in the case of Bill Clinton, um, it was uh, lying under oath related to a matter involving Monica Lewinsky. Um, this, the, the substance of it, potentially involves Americans working with Russians to impact our elections. That is a much bigger deal. As James Comey said during his testimony, if any Americans participated in that, that's a really big thing. And so, um, the difference here, though, is that, uh, of course, my party is in control of the House, and that's where Im impeachment must be considered. Um, and so the thing that's holding us back is fear of the 38 percent of Donald Trump's so solid voters, uh, because those people can kill you in a Republican primary. So uh, the, the political challenge here is being able to seek the truth without, uh, you know, enemies to punish or friends to reward. Um, and have my party rise above party and serve the country, it's really difficult when that 38 percent is out there ready to kill you in a Republican primary. Yeah, and, and Nick, you know, I feel like that is a big difference because, you, you know, you obviously uh, were a prosecutor in the Watergate situation where Republicans actually overcame that. I mean, the Democrats controlled the Congress at the time. Right, so but they didn't overcome situation. it until they actually had the smoking gun with the tapes. We actually had Nixon confirming everything that John Dean had testified to before the Senate selected. Committee. Yeah. So it, it wasn't as though the Republicans came jumping on the bandwagon. They yeah. took it seriously, as I think a lot of them are taking it seriously now. Mm -hmm. uh, but the meeting, you know, Barry Goldwater and the party elders with Richard Nixon in August of 1973 only happened because of what was on those tapes. And let's talk about that smoking gun for a minute. I'm going to stay with you just for a moment on this, Nick, because, you know, I think a lot of people are trying to get to the material differences between in these three cases. In Nixon's case, he, he consented to the idea of trying to get the CIA to fire the special prosecutor. It was a, a sort of similar situation. Similarity Except here, the Trump has done it himself. He apparently went to the head of the National Security Agency and asked him to try and put a stop to the investigation. He went to the director of security, national security, asked him to put a stop to it. I mean, really, you've got probably four acts of obstruction here. Keep in mind, the corrupt intent is simply the intent to stop the investigation. That's all that means. Yeah. But there haven't been any direct orders to stop the investigation. There ha there is, he's hoping that somebody drops something. He wants something to happen, but he hasn't put out that direct order But do order you think that, say, that bringing in the head of the FBI into the White House and saying, well, I sure hope you can see your way clear to stopping that, that's not expressing hope. That is, and it was taken by Comey to be a directive to stop the investigation. I mean, Donald Trump but, is literally telegraphing okay, but he wants it stopped. That's Comey's subjective opinion. No, it's Trump's also no, saying no, no. it. No, yeah, he said Over hope. and over. He said hope. He didn't directly order him. And then Comey's subjective opinion of Trump's intent. Isn't that different? No, because the icing on the cake is Trump admitted it. He admitted to Lester Holt that the reason he got rid of Comey was because of this Russian thing. He admitted to the Russian ambassador the next day after he did it, calling Comey basically by calling him a name, yeah. and then saying, now I've got this Russian investigation off my back. That is corrupt intent. Yeah. This is a fantastic obstruction case. And, and Paul, I want to let you in on this too, because we were prosecuting public corruption cases as opposed to like straight up criminal uh, cases of obstruction. I mean, the idea is that it is, the politics is wrapped up in it. Donald Trump has said on his Twitter feed to the Russian ambassador, apparently to his aide screaming at the TV, that he wants this investigation to end. When does the president's desire to not be investigated anymore cross over, in, in your mind, into a corrupt intent to stop himself being investigated? When he orders his underlings 
to impede the investigation when he asked for loyalty from the FBI director. So, you know, when a politician is under criminal investigation, he has a lawyer who's an advocate for him trying to keep him out of prison. At the same time, the politician, especially if it's the president of the United States, has to uphold the law. He has to enforce the law. So now we hear that Donald Trump's personal lawyer is running around the Oval Office ordering people to do this and do that. There's a real conflict between, again, the president's responsibility to the people versus his own desire to keep himself out of criminal uh, trouble. And so, Steve, I mean, you know, and, and you are alone on this. I'm going to let you have, have, have a word on it. <laughs> um, you have Mark Kasowitz now facing ethics complaints that have been filed uh, by Crew, um, the Citizens for Accountability uh, in office, um, essentially because he is telling White House officials not to get lawyers. Meanwhile, uh, the Washington Post is reporting not only, you know, obviously Pence is lawyering, right. et cetera, but the Kasowitz is telling some personnel that they don't need to have their own lawyers. He actually doesn't practice. He's not even in the bar there. So you do have a lot here. I mean, I'm okay. wondering for you, at what point, who would Donald Trump have to fire for you to agree that he's trying to stop himself being investigated? Okay, first of all, let me just say that it's smart to get a lawyer, even when you're a witness. I have been called as a witness to testify, and I have sought legal counsel. Mm -hmm. So it's just smart. Just because you have a lawyer doesn't mean you're the subject. When that refers to Pence and everybody else, including Cohen. So that's But in your mind, who, and, what would Trump have to do in your mind to show the intent to stop it, to stop the investigation? I think he, there would have to be more corroborating evidence of corrupt intent, like the Clinton situation. There was what the blue dress. There have been other situations where there. You need Nixon DNA. Did. Okay, well, let me, I, let, me I let, just, let Bob Inglis in. We're out. We're, out, we're, we're running out of time. Evidence. Bob, for you as a political matter, because a lot of this gets into the question, and most of us are lay people. We're not attorneys, but for you, Bob Inglis, when does it meet the test of impeachable corrupt intent? For you, if you were in Congress right now. Would you support those articles of impeachment that are floating around the House of Representatives? Well, uh, no, it's not, not time to draft articles of impeachment, but it is time to pursue this investigation with real vigor. And that's what I'm concerned about for my party, is that really we should not be holding back here. We should be driving forward with an aggressive investigation to get to the bottom of this so that we can restore the confidence of the American people that we'll, we'll check into it. If there's, a, if there's a, an allegation that, that the Russians, a foreign hostile power, interfered in our election, we'll check into everything about it. That will give people confidence in my party, as it is, my party is discrediting itself. It's basically saying that, no, we should drop all these investigations about Trump and Russia. That's, that's a real problem. And it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's responding to that 38%. It's kowtowing to them. Those folks are ultimately gonna kill the Republican party anyway. So it's time to face them and say, you know what? Let's go forward in this investigation. Let's find out. And let's also overcome this politics of grievance that we've developed. So it's not time to, to, to draft articles of, of impeachment, but it surely is time to get with this investigation and get behind it strongly. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm going to leave it right there. Seema Iyer, Nick Ackerman, Paul Butler, and I'm sure a lot of people are wishing not former Congressman Bob <laughs> Inglis. Uh, thank you guys all for being here. Really appreciate it. All right. And coming up, Robert Mueller goes to Jared. That's next. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.